scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Paul began to pray and said, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus. He says that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, illumination, accurate knowledge of the operation of the things of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I did a teaching some weeks ago, the walking knowledge of the word. Can I tell you something? Any knowledge you know that cannot improve the quality of your life and advance the kingdom of God is junk. Kick it out. It doesn't matter how, how powerful it is. Because the Bible says, ye shall know the truth. And if it is really the truth, it will set you free. Are you listening to me? Many of us have knowledge that puff up, but it's not consistent with the operation of the kingdom. It's time for you to begin to edit a lot of things. Don't let people fool you with. Listen, see, the apostle speaking said, we did not teach cunningly devised fables. In order, these things are not just grammar. They exist. They are not just cunningly devised fables. Philosophies of men that are nice. You have quoted them. You have done a lot of things. It's time to pray. Paul prayed and said, the spirit of revelation. He said that you may understand in all your getting, get understanding. Know how it works. Don't just know that it works. Know how it works. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. The kingdom of God is a system. It's a structure. You can learn its operation. It is this learning of the operation that is called revelation. Revelation is not just some spooky things about dimensions, about what color blue means in the spirit and what green means. If that thing is not improving your life and making you a man of power and grace, if it's not changing your territory and if it's not advancing the kingdom of God, kick it out. Many of us have knowledge that puffs us up, yet demons can stand, look you to the face and oppress you. The Bible says there, ever learning, ever learning, but never coming to the comprehension, epigenosco, the accurate understanding of the way spiritual things work. Ever learning, receiving, rema upon rema. Can I tell you something? There is a way. Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say, I am one of the many ways. I am the way. The principles of the kingdom can be known. You can know that you know them. The apostle says that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have, at what point did he handle it? He says such as I have, a man can know when he has something. Such as I have. And there is an anointing that opens the eyes of men. Are you hearing me? 
if you go to a native doctor there is something he can do to your eyes and when others are looking you are seeing revelations 3 18 it says anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see there is an anointing that causes your eyes to see so that you will accurately understand the operation of things anoint your eyes with alsa and then you will see we are going to pray you are going to say lord it's not just for miracle service tonight i want to receive things that i know how they came so that i can reproduce the result again and again if you are healed and you don't know how it's there what if you go to a territory where there is no koinonia we are raising ambassadors what makes ambassador is knowledge and understanding revelation that every time you are confronted with an issue you understand what operation of the spirit has been designed you are going to pray oh, inside and outside when it's time to pray pray because prayer is also a key in the kingdom it says is any man afflicted it is a let him sing praise and worship let him pray let him pray lift your voice and pray say lord anoint my eyes tonight i'm tired of guesswork in the spirit anoint my eyes tonight bring me into an accurate comprehension of the laws of the spirit the laws of the kingdom pray lord anoint my eyes this trouble that is going on in my family teach me how to solve that problem teach me so that any day i see that problem i know what to do he said the men of Issachar they had an understanding of the times they knew what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do when you know what to do you will not just receive miracles you will become the miracle worker come on pray lord i need to know what to do concerning my finances i need to know what to do concerning my marriage i need to know what to do to keep the heavens open I need to know what to do to keep growing in the anointing I need to know what to do to accurately understand the world I need to know what to do to remain in hell I need to know what to do the spirit of revelation hallelujah hallelujah listen to me let me tell you something that will surprise you look at me time does not change anything it is revelation that changes things are you hearing what i'm saying time does not have the ability to change things time only becomes useful if you incorporate it into the current revelation of what you are having oh one day i know god will do something i know my god let me tell you something if you know what to do and it is time that is bringing it to manifest then you can rejoice but if you are not doing anything and you are only hoping you will wait forever are you hearing what i'm saying you will wait forever 38 years he was at bethesda the pool there but within minutes that man became whole is that true you're going to pray and say lord today i set the time are you hearing what i'm saying today since time is not a factor in the spirit that means this night is my own time lift your voice and pray Take that top Give us this day, not tomorrow. Give us this day. Give us this day. Give us this day. That change of genotype. Lord, bring it tonight. That HIV virus. Let it die tonight. That joblessness. Let it die tonight. 
that upliftment in your ministry let it come tonight that apostolic fire that prophetic fire let it be tonight that new level of grace and authority in the spirit let it be tonight Hallelujah. Something will happen in your life this night that you will not forget in a long time. I'm prophesying to you, something will happen in your life this night that you will not forget in a long time. Hallelujah. Matthew 4. Please sit down for a while. There are people standing outside. Please, let there not be any vacant seat. If there is a vacant seat, call them in. There are people standing. God will bless you. Wherever you are, God will visit you. Please, let, let's not have any vacant seat. Please, ushers, let all the seats be filled. There's no reason why there should be vacant seats. Well, there are people standing outside. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome everyone to our August miracle service. We give God all the glory. Hallelujah. My prayer all the time is that you do not become too familiar with the things that God is doing because he's not always doing the same thing. Hallelujah. Let it not be like Jacob that the Lord was in this place. I want you to know that tremendous amount of prayer and spiritual preparation goes in for every meeting and much more the miracle service. Are you hearing me? God is not a joker. He will not bring you here to play jamboree with you. He said he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. I know that there is a God and I know he will do wonders this night. Matthew chapter 4 very quickly. I welcome everyone. There's so many people coming from different places. Hallelujah. Salute you. I celebrate you. When I was coming in, I saw a number of men of God outside. God bless you. Hallelujah. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. My spirit is fired up this night. Verse 23. Matthew 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases. Listen please. Diverse diseases and torments. And those who were possessed or oppressed with demons. And those who had epilepsy. And those who had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and beyond the Jordan. 
there are many of us who have come from different parts of this city and different states in this country the Bible says when they all came to Jesus not to a man of God he healed them all I want you to know that the Lord Jesus is in this place are you hearing me the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place and by the grace of God God has given us an anointing he says son of man prophesy to the dry bones when he prophesied he didn't say hear ye the word of Ezekiel he said hear ye the word of the Lord hear ye the word of the one who sent me to prophesy so tonight you will hear the word of the Lord and faith comes by hearing listen to me please faith comes by hearing and hearing the hearing comes by the word of God when you hear the word of God you get up and you take action until you have taken action you have not taken any step of faith are you hearing what I'm saying faith is just it's not just about confession faith is about taking action every time you do not take action it's a sign that you are still doubting is that true Bishop Oedeko said if it is truly the word of God if it is faith it will move you into action if that word does not move you into action hallelujah then it means it was not faith so you cannot move your leg and the word of God comes you receive it prove that you have received it by taking action and Peter held on to his hands and lifted him and the man leaping stood his bones and ankles regained strength take away your eyes from whatever problems please if you've not written your prayer request while you're sitting down just write it quickly we have to be very brief this night and be out of here praise the Lord so I want you to believe that you are in the presence of the living God God will not bring you to waste your time realize that it is within his ability to heal you do you believe that it is within his ability to change your story it's within his ability to anoint you there are many of us who have stayed at certain levels of grace for a long time it's time to move forward the bible says ye have tarried around this mountain long enough turn ye not words hallelujah whatever it is that you desire the bible says and whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou will have it so tonight you are the one that knows the problem don't wait for your neighbor to receive for you as the word of the lord begins to come don't wait until your case is called the calling of the cases of people is just sign, a sign and a wonder. The Bible says Jesus was in the room teaching and the power of God was present to heal. Just like the glory and the power of God is present this night to heal, to deliver. There are many of you, you have been oppressed by all kinds of demonic spirits. You want to move forward. There are strongholds keeping you down. There are strongholds, hear me please, keeping many families down. You do everything you know to do and there's no advancement. Everybody, every lady in the family, no marriage. Pretty lady, no marriage. It's not like you live the promiscuous life. That devil will bow this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, no job, everybody in your family. You went to school, suffered for years, nothing to show forth for it. Acts 10 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing, it didn't say those who were sick, healing all day that were oppressed. Sickness is an oppression. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That terminal disease is an oppression. Tonight, don't give excuse for anything. 
It's not your sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not your HIV. Yes, you have medical reports. But whose report will you believe tonight? That's the question. Whose report will you believe? Whose report? Make up your mind. Some of you, they have concluded about you. As you are here right now, scattered in this crowd, inside and outside. There are many of you, everybody has concluded about you. They said, just forget this guy or forget this lady. The person is a useless person. But the Bible says there is hope for a tree, even if it be cut down. At the scent of water. Let me tell you something. Many of you, because of certain things you have done, like Samson, your hair has been cut. This is the place tonight that that hair will grow back. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. For though I fall, yet will I rise again. Are you listening to me? This is the place. The Bible says, son of man, what seest thou? He said, four horns. These horns that have lifted up themselves. So that no one will lift up his head in Judah. He said, but I will send carpenters. Carpenters. Hallelujah. There are many of you pronouncements and ordinances of wicked men have been decreed over your family that nothing good will come out of your life and nothing good will come out of your family. The Bible says, who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not decreed it? Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of us victims of all kinds of satanic assaults, ordinances and covenants of darkness, that have been entered and many of us are suffering things we have no idea of but the bible says the children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers tonight god will visit you are you hearing what i'm saying god will visit you there are some of you here you are tired struggling like my brother shared with all kinds of habits you're a man of god great woman of god but pornography will not live your life you have, you have fasted, you have prayed. As you are fasting, the devil is still mocking you. Hallelujah. You are still fasting, you are breaking the fast with sleeping with somebody. You are, it's not like you are bad. That devil is a liar this night. Because the hand of the Lord will be strong upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, everything you lay your hands to do doesn't work. It will keep working for others till it gets to your turn. Make sure as you are receiving tonight, hear me, every one of us is representing at least a family. Are you listening to me? He said, as for me and my house, they didn't call all of them one by one. Somebody stood in the gap. As for me, that terminal disease eating your father or your mother, he can bow this night. the bible says wherefore god has so highly exalted him he said and given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of that name what will happen how many knees how many knees help me how many knees hiv cancer every knee must bow the knee that will not bow this night has not been created are you hearing me the bible says blotting out every handwriting question where was the handwriting written? There are handwritings, ordinances of darkness. Nothing happens to you until you get to a certain age. Suddenly, some things begin to happen. Some of you, as you are sitting, looking at me and hearing me outside, you are being molested by all kinds of things. You are sleeping in the night, all kinds of devilish things oppressing you. You are afraid. Nobody knows. See, this night, let me tell you, just humble yourself and open up your spirit. Are you hearing me? Keep your whatever it is and say, Lord, do something in my life this night. Hallelujah. Demonic things. The devil and his assaults joining the heads of people Playing with people's destinies. There are many of you. 
you and your you know this you and your you are perpetually living under a close heaven but this is why the lord brought you tonight the name miracle service we would have called it worship service miracle service was given by god are you hearing me it was just it was not just a name that was formulated it's a miracle service and your faith your faith is that connecting pipe to the power of god kenny said something was it kenny or, or, or pastor jakes now that said something very powerful he said make sure that this night you are not watching other people some of you like watching other people some of you even came because of what you had some of you are critics you just came to verify a lot of things some of you came with a sincere desire some of you came sluggishly because you like a lady and she said i'm going for koinonia i said talk love does everything let me tell you something redefine your priority this night are you hearing what i'm saying some of you are coming as usual some of you are coming because you are workers he said he that cometh unto him must believe first that he exists and then that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him i came here with an open heart i began to tell the lord from home i said lord i'm the first person the bible says the husband man shall be the first partaker and so i told the lord before you begin to touch the people i'm not being selfish hallelujah don't stand watching people and say why are they praying like this why are they jumping like this and celebrating god you can get up we will share the grace and you will go back you will be watching this is this is the reason why a lot of people think miracles are fake because they have never gotten one every time people are open say how can a beautiful sister like this be rolling on the ground praying and say god visit me you are carrying your dignified self and god will pass you and touch somebody and then at the end of it you see people celebrating miracles and breakthroughs testimony is coming and you say it's not true why is it that there are only specific people this thing is stage managed if you open up your heart that's what god told cain cain was complaining why abel was receiving breakthroughs and he was not receiving god said if you do what cain did will your sacrifice not be accepted participate in the meeting this night follow instructions diligently when they say lift up your hands and say amen don't say please this lifting up of hands this is the problem say my story must change this night say it from your heart my story must change this night say lord i know you are alive i know you are powerful i know you are able to visit my life visit the works of my hands visit my health visit my family and this night i place a demand by faith that i will truly receive can i tell you something if your heart is not open to receive it's better to go home you can do something meaningful with your time you can go and read the bible or do something else but I advise you this night don't be among the spectators if you don't have an expectation carefully think about it there's no crime not having one but get one so that you are not in confusion the Bible said give us this day our it didn't say give us this day what we need that's too ambiguous give us when specific time specific need our what that's what he wanted daily bread so lord give me this day this change of genotype give me this day a change of result give me this day a story lift my head oh god let somebody know that a giant can arise from your family there are some of you like gideon you are your family is the least and you are the least in your family and you are busy hiding this night the lord is speaking to you what are you doing on the ground almighty man of valor do you not know who you are in christ redemption offers us an opportunity to rise and reign like kings are you hearing me he said awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light 
as that rain of glory comes some of you what you need tonight is an upgrade of grace the grace you have is there but you have gotten to the limit of it there are certain dimensions hear me let me tell you something see grace is in levels the bible says he measured a thousand cubits is that true measured another thousand cubits those will open to you according to the degree of grace let me tell you the truth it's not everything that is possible for everybody are you hearing me i told you we are all equal in christ but we are not equal in grace the prophet servant took the rod the same rod went and laid it on the dead body nothing happened is that true but the prophet came and did it see that it is not possible for you does not mean it's not possible in christ but tonight jesus himself the bible says and if i be lifted up tonight we have exalted him with all the worship christ is lifted up you cannot come to his presence and those chains and shackles and they bound something some of us have been bound by limitations by mindsets the bible says but the hand of the lord came upon something and that rope became like wax like wax many of you will shake out of some things this night some of you have been thrown into the den of the lion and people have forgotten about you but can i tell you something your enemies will call your name and you will answer you will say i'm alive i got into that dungeon but before then that shakina of god that preserves men you will come out strong come out wise come out powerful come out full of grace and tell them i have a testimony i know what it means to go to the valley of the shadow of death but god who can take a man from a dung hill the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon tonight many of you will activate breakthroughs god will connect you let me tell you something listen to me the holy ghost gave me a revelation some time ago he said god is called the father of spirits have you ever known the meaning of that name that means every spirit is subject to him when the disciples came in Luke, in the book of Luke, they said, they came rejoicing, saying, Master, even the demons were subject to us through thy name. And Jesus said, do not just rejoice because the spirits. So he's called the father. Are you listening to me? The chief, the captain above every spirit, including the spirit of your destiny help us. And so if the father of spirits moves, he can move any spirit. Hear me? The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar did not sleep that night. He got up by himself. He said, oh Daniel, has your God been able to save you? May my God reveal himself as the father of spirits over certain families. The father of spirits every spirit listen herbalists understand this principle they can enter their coven there's what they call summoning the spirits of people is that true while they are sleeping they summon your spirit and the spirit of the person comes to the coven they are trying to mimic god god is the lion satan roars like the lion tonight god will summon the spirits of men let me tell you the truth and compel them to bless you hallelujah he said look up to abraham your father and unto sarah that bear thee for i called him out alone i blessed him and i increased him i called him alone this night is not you and your neighbor i know you are going out together just leave that thing for a while now are you hearing me it's not the issue of me and my neighbor or me and my family members oh, oh this guy is our neighbor in new extension forget about that thing i know mother came with father Bro, forget about that thing and say lord i will not let you go i will not let you go i will not let you go until something in my spirit breaks open 
I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I'm provoking you to get angry tonight. Because what you are about to lift, listen, when you watch weightlifters as they lift weights, before they lift it, you see them shouting. They are getting themselves angry. Well, because when they are angry, an ability they cannot explain comes. This is what I'm doing to you. When I fire your faith, every unbelief that came with your situation, I know you trekked from town to come here, but can I tell you something? God is able to change the story of a man. Tonight, let's see that demonic report that says you will not bear a child. Let's see that demonic report that says you have fibroid and that you will be pregnant. Let me tell you the truth. My Bible tells me God opened the womb of Leah. God opened the womb of Rachel. It is God that opens a door that no devil can shut. And he can shut a door that no devil can open. Revelation 3 verse 8. He said, Behold, I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word. He said, Behold, I set before you, I set before you. Hallelujah. We had a very touching testimony over the week of the favor of God. Hallelujah. Someone called us and a very professional web designer from Gombe State is the one that he designs for state governments, their websites. And he just called us. He said, Koinonia messages have been blessing him, opening him to dimensions in the spirit. He said he has been stepping into new levels in his career. And he said, please, I want to transport myself, foot my bill, lodge myself, and come and build a free website for the ministry. And I want to train the media team on how to maintain it, everything free of charge. How can you explain this? See, listen, listen. I don't say this thing. See, let me tell you something. We tell testimonies because the testimony of Jesus... That means a testimony that was initiated by the spirit of the Christ is a spirit of prophecy, meaning it has in itself the ability to compel you to desire it and see it happen in your life. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. Don't sit down there and say, can it happen? You are seeing what God, you cannot belong to a ministry that is carrying certain levels of grace and is not working in your life. Get angry this night. Get angry. He said, I and all the children that the Lord has given me, get angry. When they saw the apostle, they said he had been with Jesus. See, listen, let me tell you this night. Don't you ever, hear me, don't you, just leave him, leave him. Don't you ever, are you hearing me? Try to make Satan make you think there is no hope. That language of there is no hope is of the devil. Some of you are outside, hear my voice. Because there are many voices speaking. There are some voices telling you you will never marry. Ladies, hear me. Some are saying because you live the past life. Look at how it is in your house. What is your business? With what has happened to Mr. ABC. The Bible says. A thousand shall fall by your side. Is that true? They fell near you. He said another ten thousand. By your right side. He said none shall harm you. Some of you hear me. This night. I'm serious about this marriage thing. We are going to break this devilish yoke. Some of you have been laughing about it. If you don't take it serious. This night you will be surprised. You are just saying I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't get up and deal with it this night. The Bible says, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Don't let cartoons fool you. This world is not a playground. Are you hearing me? So when it's time to receive, make sure you receive. And the Lord is going to be restoring in this place. You live the past life. 
you lost your womb who told you God has stopped creating read the book of Revelation he said for thou was slain and you have received all things he said you have created he said they they are and were created they were created and are still being created God did not stop creation he only rested on the seventh day when he rested on the seventh day there was no need for recreation when man spoiled things he sent Jesus back let me tell you something remember not the former things are you hearing me tonight don't let the devil say even you even you that everybody knows you in your area to be a prostitute so what see this is why when they came to the land of Jericho because of the prophetic destiny are you hearing me of Rahab he said kill everything plus the animals so that there will be no trace to her history because she was going to be the great grandmother of Jesus he said destroy everything of the past tonight let me tell you something everything whether your mistakes whether your carelessness of the past the Bible says remember not the former things how many of us are ready to receive tonight let me give you a few seconds right now I'd like you to think on the things you want God to do for you please don't be mechanical about this we are not doing jamboree this night think very well know what you want God to do if his husband say husband don't say a man if his wife say wife if his breakthrough say Lord my heavens are short if it's finances say finances if it's your ministry that is dying no growth say oh God measure a thousand cubits this night any area of your life terminal disease infections lump in your breast cancer whatever it is just believe God don't say we have been coming I came the last time I did receive master we have told all night they said he said nevertheless this night at thy word rise up on your feet everybody go ahead and pray in tongues just for one minute exercise your spirit man outside I'm telling you I see a cloud outside a mighty cloud a mighty cloud the Lord is showing me a silvery cloud outside God will do mighty things outside pray in one minute cry out your expectation to God go ahead forget about your neighbor talk to the Lord say Lord you know that you are my last hope this night you are my last hope in this place if you do not help me there is no help again if you do not save my family if you don't change our story then let it be that there is no God but I have no option again pray that demon spirit assaulting your destiny pray enough is enough that yoke of bad luck pray Christ has redeemed you by faith tonight you will enter into the experience Christ has paid the price you don't need to pay it again but it takes faith to enforce that which Christ has done the price has been paid it will not be paid this night that ultimate price yes Lord
let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. This is not just a song. Listen to what you are saying. Listen to what you are saying. Let it rain. Let it rain. Hallelujah. I hail you most high. Lift your hands, everybody, inside and outside. I truly hail you most high. I hail you most high. I truly hail, hail you. Hallelujah. Hear me. The power of God is present in this place, mighty. And God is going to be fishing out people and families. Hear me. Some of you will stand in for your family. Every yoke of darkness, every curse, every the power of God is already moving. Every curse outside, I want you to get ready because there will be a release of fire. Hallelujah! At the count of three, hear me inside and outside. At the count of three with all your heart you're going to shout Jesus hear me the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to be moving in this place in a dramatic way especially outside there will be mighty deliverances for you for your family members every oppression it will bow tonight because upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Father. Take over this meeting right now, Holy Spirit. Take over this meeting. Take over this meeting. Do mighty things. I give you all the glory. At the count of three, hear me. I confront gates. I confront powers. In the name that is above all names. Out of the abundance of grace that is sufficient in this house at the count of three every devil I speak from the realm of the spirit and I confront altars by the fire of the Holy Ghost you will bow at the count of three one two three shout Jesus that devil of darkness come out let God's people go free outside the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Bring them out. Every act of witchcraft, every act of divination. Every act of sorcery, let the fire fall. I expose every power of darkness right now, right now, right now. Outside, outside, there are angels of deliverance in a mighty way. Bring them out, 
Oh, there is fire in this place. No devil can stand. No devil against your destiny. No enchantment. No divination against Jacob shall stand. Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, this night they will scatter. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands again. Outside. Hallelujah. Hear me. Those of you outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. God is not done with you. Please pick them and bring them. Many of it will be a mass deliverance. Are you hearing me? Just those outside. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Is the name above all names. Yokes are breaking. Spells are breaking. Yokes are breaking. Yokes are breaking. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, outside, angels are still moving. Outside, shake it, 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 it. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right at the back, right to the back. Lord, let no devil, let no devil stand your presence. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It's the baptism of fire. No devil will stand when the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hear me? Hear me? Some of you are receiving liberty. You don't have to fall and come out. Are you hearing me? But they are just living. Living. See, some of you be checking. We have not prayed for the sick yet. But be checking yourself. You will find out that miracles are already happening. Because some of these sicknesses are orchestrated by devils. Now, hear me the lord jesus christ is in this place at the count of three i speak to all these demons that have oppressed these people as a point of contact i speak as an ambassador at the count of three you will leave them complete deliverance no hiding let the word of god search even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit there be no hiding place at the count of three under this apostolic fire at the count of three you will go right now one two three go 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 come out come out come out and return no more come out come out come out and return no more come out come out there's no hiding place come out there's fire upon every devil fire shake it it's the fire of the holy ghost there's no hiding place Listen, as this is happening to you, I want you to know that this is happening in your family too. Are you hearing me? This is the spirit of death in this brother's family. The spirit of death. Right now, thou foul devil, I see you in the spirit. Go, go, come out now. Come out now. Out. Hallelujah. Let me pray for this lady. See, I'm seeing horns horns this is what i'm seeing that devil is a liar right now i make contact with your body by the fire of the holy ghost out of her right now you're a wicked foul devil of darkness just lay your hands on her head in the name of jesus now come out thou devil of darkness there's no hiding for you in the mighty name of jesus this curse of darkness is gone from this lady hallelujah ulcer if you have ulcer lift your hands anybody ulcer please you're going to be healed now check yourself hallelujah now we'll take some instant testimonies hallelujah we'll take some instant testimonies because of time we usually don't do that but we we'll just to encourage a few people lift your hands inside and outside you're suffering from peptic ulcer it will go now. Peptic ulcer. Lift your hands as I rebuke that spirit. Some of you have wounds. Those wounds will close up now. Now, not later on. Just leave them. God is not done with them until he is done. Brother, look at me. You are a great man, but let me tell you, you didn't come out for yourself. You came out for your family. Where are you from? not where you are coming from Edo State. Edo State this is what I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a shrine with seven stones and there's Kola knot in the middle 
Are you listening to me? So God is setting you free. You believe that? Let me pray for you for your family. Out now. Those altars of darkness be gone forever. Please don't be quick to carry them. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, altars. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That name that is above every other name. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers be healed now. Ulcers inside and outside be healed now. Start checking yourself. Check yourself. Miracles are happening. God is healing ulcer. Ulcer. Check. Check. The moment you see a notable miracle, um, maybe we'll have a few, I don't know, maybe at the back, one or two people. The ministers who verify them will take one or two testimonies. The Lord is showing me who is Hanatu. Hanatu, Hanatu. I'm hearing the name Hanatu. Come now, don't wait there, please. There's no time. Hanatu. Hanatu. God is visiting the family of Hanatu. You are Hanatu. Your name is Hanatu. You. Look at me. God is visiting your family. Are you hearing me? A devil of darkness spell and yokes of bondage let our family go now in the name of Jesus Christ God is not just delivering the family God is anointing this young man God will do mighty things take the anointing you will become a mighty man of God mighty man of God hallelujah sister this lady come please quickly open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain I'm hearing the name Grace look at me who is Grace I'm hearing the name Grace your friend your church member we need to pray for Grace because death wants to take her life are you hearing me? Grace, that's, I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is helping me. But then the Lord is going to visit you in three things. See, listen to me. Number one, I, the Lord always shows me these things because I'm seeing marital issue. Are you married? No, sir. Are you married? Do you know me? Have I met with you? The Lord wants to solve that issue right now because you're looking pretty on the outside are you hearing me but i'm seeing shadow that's the only thing i'm seeing as your face in the spirit there is no form just shadow but the lord is going to set you free number two who is doing a building project me. a building did you tell me this is the second thing god is going to do supernatural grace to complete the building project are you listening to me number three god is blessing you in the area of business i'm hearing business who does business you sure don't just say yes or are you very sure shoes and bags. okay you are going to see an escalation in your business three th these three things hold my hands father that yoke of bondage I break her free from it right now ah what is this thing that I'm seeing again do you know what I'm seeing I'm not seeing a woman I'm seeing a man See, don't feel embarrassed. Who comes to oppress you in the night? You have those kind of experiences. This is the man I'm seeing. That devil is a liar. Are you hearing me? Let her go. She must be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what is stopping this marriage. I set you free. You will experience the hand of God, the grace of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Petrus, your son name is Petrus. Your son name is Petrus. Petrus. Your son name is Petrus. Please let's hurry up. Your son name is Petrus. When you have that person, please let him come out. Hallelujah. Now, if you have problem with your ears, please we have to be fast. Ears, whether one side or if you came with anybody inside and outside, you came with anybody that is partially or completely deaf, please put your hands there right now. Put your hands right there. Some of you feel like water in your ears. Just put your hands. Please, 
as you're receiving miracles some of you i'm not mentioning your case just walk out bishop stan and pastor jakes are outside take the courage to walk out now go and drop your testimony hallelujah we're going to take one or two of them the ministers are at the back hallelujah they are standing even if the miracle has started they'll perfect it look at me come see brother come where were you sitting outside at the back hold on what happened to you i was sitting down outside so i've been coming here for like very well but i've not felt anything so i opened up my heart what happened what happened that's the question for you vibrating man. see the lord jesus because even now god has not finished one of the things god is calling you it will be a time of preparation but god is calling you you're going to be a great teacher of the word are you hearing me he will teach the word very prophetically look at my eyes just look at my eyes spirit of revelation my god i pray the eye is the light of the body let something happen to this brother let there be a straight line from genesis to revelation i impart upon you just look at my eyes you're receiving a mighty impartation thank you jesus hallelujah please go outside god is visiting people i'm seeing some someone healed lump in the breast lump in the breast is getting healed right now right now the moment it is your case celebrate god check it and go out celebrate it there's nothing to be ashamed of this is this is a outside a lady is healed lump in the breast your right breast outside there's healing going on right now a lump in the breast outside a lady is being healed lump in the breast is going hallelujah now blood disease blood disease i want to pray for blood disease whether hepatitis hepatitis is killing people like chickens right now whether it is hepatitis hiv aside from genotypes we'll pray for genotypes differently hallelujah but any other blood disease please lift your hands quickly quickly please lift your hands want to rebuke that devil thank you jesus thank you jesus if you're lifting your hands lift it because the power of god will come upon you right now in the name of jesus i pray blood disease be healed be healed right now inside and outside be healed HIV virus die now in the name of Jesus sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia die right now please can we get another mic hallelujah okay let's just take one hallelujah so sir, um, this lady had been suffering from asthma a long time and also sorry for a long time and she said she couldn't shout and in fact right now she's lost her voice hallelujah because god healed her wife standing outside the moment man of god said that people with ulcer god is touching them right now god touched and she was healed she began to shout and she's lost her voice hallelujah can you shout for us shout. praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord please as more miracles are happening don't just come out here to testify please now i want to pray for a woman you came you have pains it's, it's an elderly woman something i don't know if it's a growth or something please who is that please and please let's save time god is healing people right now and then i'm seeing watch this this part you're feeling sometimes you walk and it's almost like you want to fall your bone here come out you're a lady you're a lady god is showing me the lady is holding a baby this is what i'm seeing you are holding a baby whether it's your child who is that please holding a baby oh you are holding a baby where is the baby was she holding a baby because come open 
the floodgates of heaven. Where's, where's the pain? This is the baby. This is the baby. Come, madam. You will be healed right now. Look at me. You, you can see her limping. Who can see her limping? Can you see her limping? Can you see her limping? Madam, hold my hands. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Lay your hands on her. Which of them? Which of them? Where's the pain? What happened? Just like that. That devil will leave you right now. Because there is a name. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Come. March your legs. Go ahead. Go ahead. March. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Is there any pain? Are you feeling any pain? Just a little. Go ahead. Just march. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now check it. Walk. Walk and come. Walk and come. Jump. Look at. Look at this. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Open the heavens. Let it rain. is ministering to me just leave her five months you are a lady here you have not seen your period for five months five months you have not seen your period you've shared it with a few friends right now this night this night i know there are lady ushers they'll help you hallelujah all kinds of menstrual issues it will disappear it will disappear right now open the floodgates of heaven as soon as i pray for you take her to the restroom you will check yourself right now right now that yoke of bondage be free now by the power of the holy ghost there's the fire of the holy ghost please take her please take her so she doesn't feel embarrassed she's not the only one there will be miracles there are more miracles coming celebrate jesus christ please can we have another mic so that pastor jakes is there another mic okay it's here please just go to the back Go to the back. Yes. Hallelujah. This brother's name is Dennis. 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 And while standing here, when the man of God said, she lift up her hands, and those that had ulcers, she lift up your hands. God is healing ulcer. They actually had ulcer, and it translated into asthma. Hallelujah. And while lifting up his hands, what happened? Praise the Lord. This is my first time to come here, and it led to asthmatic. Hallelujah. As the man of God says, like if you have as uh, if you have ulcer, and I believe he's going to he's going to be healed. And as I lift up my hand, I'm having chest chest pain. Hallelujah! But now I'm not feeling anything. It's just as cool as breathe, as breathe in and out, breathe in and out. Go Hallelujah. ahead, breathe in and out, breathe in and out, in and out. Any problem? No problem. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. My grain headache has just been healed. My grain headache has been healed now. My grain headache, please check yourself. My grain headache, my grain headache has been healed. Make sure you just rush down to the back. My grain headache, thank you, Jesus Christ. My grain headache has been healed. Now, please listen. There's someone you wake up in the morning, your heart area here. Your heart area pains you. It's as if your heart is tearing. When you wake up early in the morning, this thing has been happening for a long time. Who is that person? Your heart, just, just this way. You cannot even sleep on that side. Because when you rest on that side, you have serious problem. This is not the only one. I'm seeing a lady. You're a young lady. You're a young lady. Open the floodgates. Mama, do, does she understand English? Who brought her? Mama? Okay. What? 
Selena is a official outside interpreter. Ask her what's wrong with her. Make it down, Mama. Her hand and her legs. Her hand. Everything. This is, see, the devil once is supposed to be from her head down. This is stroke. Are you seeing? This is stroke that the devil wants to bring. Tell her right now she will, she's going to be healed and she will dance. Miracles. Look at the lady who just came. Hallelujah. You need to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While standing here worshiping God, she said she's had menstrual pain for a long, long time. Hallelujah. The pain had been there and while Apostle ministered to her, something remarkable happened. You want to hear? Hallelujah. Please, we need a lady to touch her stomach. She said before she were pains, so we need somebody to verify. Now the pains are gone. Yes. The pains are gone. Yes. Press it. Any pain? Hallelujah. Please celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Check yourself. Don't just stand waiting. Check yourself. God is doing miracles. Even if you're outside, just Bishop and Pastor Jakes are at the back. Mama, tell her. God is going to heal her right now. Ask her, does she believe? Tell her to hold my hands. The Lord Jesus sets you free. That devil, gone. Pain, gone. Come up. Tell her to come up and march. It's gone. It's gone. Look at this. It's gone. It's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Hold on. How does she feel? Is this still? Is the pain still there? She's not feeling any pain. Mama, let's match. Can you dance? Play any song for her. Look at, look at somebody who could not stand well. What kind of song do they sing? You, you people should learn Alsa songs for our mothers. You people don't know one Alsa song. Annie, give us one Alsa song. Ubangi chikai kare kai saya bo Alla mungo de makaya Ubangi chikai kare kai saya Come on dance celebrate Jesus Ubangi chikai outside a hole in the teeth has been closed outside a hole in the teeth check yourself a hole in the teeth a hole in the teeth it has been paining you check you find out it has is gone right now right now the lord is showing me a hole in the teeth is closed the hole is closed completely please make sure you verify before coming okay Okay, repain. It's my heart. Each and every moment when I wake up in the morning, it's like it shifts and it aches really for a while now. 
this moment while I was standing right here, when this woman just received her healing, I felt it just happened immediately. Praise the Lord. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Please, if you are healed, just walk right at the back. The Lord is showing me another miracle. One eye, the left eye of somebody outside. God is really visiting people outside. The left eye, you don't see well with it. There's, you see like an image intercepting your eye. It's gone right now. Please check it. What was she? Okay. Lay your hands there. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Gone. Check yourself. See, the anointing does not just come. Check yourself. Please don't, don't feel embarrassed to say you have to say yes. No. If it doesn't happen, say it. We'll pray for you here. Check yourself. Check yourself very well. Do what you couldn't do. Can you? Any pain? I'm still waiting for the lady. Someone. The, I think. The, did I say left or right now? Breast lump. Breast lump is gone. It's gone. Check it. Don't, don't wait. Check. Check and go outside. Pastor Jakes is there. They are busy verifying people's cases. Inside or outside. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, um, this is very interesting. There's a family here that has been suffering delay. And God is going to solve the problem in a very dramatic way. Wait, 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 wait. Listen. The power of God is going to carry the person from where he is. The person will run out here with such speed. This is a sign that this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. This is the sign that God gave me. This is very interesting. The way the Holy Spirit walks, sign and wonders here. From outside, from outside, the power of God will pick the person. He will run with the spirit of Elijah. It's from outside. Lord, let it happen according to your word. I give you praise and I give you glory. You will come out under a tremendous influence of the spirit. It's a sign that this is what God is doing. Please, let's continue before the person comes out. You will come out, certainly. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I'm seeing a baby that is sick. You came with a baby that is sick. Please, who is the person? The baby cries in the night. Please hurry up quickly. Because Pastor Jakes will still come up here and Bishop Sam. Ah, whatever mountain will not has not answered to it will answer to you this night. Who is this? This is the baby that is sick. What's wrong with her? In 2000. Open the floodgates of heaven. 2003, she was sick, so we took her to the hospital and they transfused her. After then, she was. One more person again, this same experience for one more person outside. One more person outside is going to happen again. One more person by the power and the influence of the Spirit. This is a sign and a wonder. God is restoring delay in families. The power of God will just pick you from the crowd. And bring you here with tremendous speed. Let's listen. They transfuse her, and after what did they say is wrong with her? The doctor confirmed that she has HIV. With the transfusion of blood, she has HIV. That's what the doctor confirmed. That what? She's HIV positive. That devil is a liar. Come, my dear, look at me. What's her name? How can a girl bear the name Favor and still have HIV? You see how demonic Satan is? The Bible says a man was sitting at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation. A lady, this is like Jabez, but tonight like the prayer of Jabez, he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Hallelujah. You will go and test her. You will come back with a testimony. We will change it. HIV is a spirit. And it will bow. Sweetheart, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Yeah. Just leave her. And 
possess her. She's free. Another mighty miracle. Another mighty miracle. I tell you, God is doing wonders in this place tonight. Listen. Hallelujah. Apostle, this is amazing. Listen. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. The, the word of knowledge you gave about a woman, a lady outside with the with the lump. Lump. The lady with the lump. Listen. How okay, how long has it been? Help us. Mm, for like three. How long? Three years. Right now. It's gone. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Look at me. Lift your hands. Lord, let your power come upon her. You will perfect this right now. That which you have started, let it be perfected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amazing. Amazing. I'm telling you. God is doing amazing things. So if your miracle has started, Bishop is praying, Jake, they are praying. We are very serious. Don't go back. Don't go back. A wrist has just been healed. You feel a pain. In fact, there used to be like a growth. Check it, it has disappeared. Check it right now, it has disappeared. Check it, it has disappeared. Check it. God is doing mighty miracles. Check it, it has disappeared. Hallelujah. Now I'm seeing a woman. There are objects that move in your body. Serious objects. It moves sometimes to your legs. Sometimes to your chest. Hallelujah. Right now as I pray, you are going to be free and you find out that you are free. You are feeling light. Please, when that happens to you, go down. The ministers are seriously praying there. Father, in the name of Jesus, this demonic thing, this demonic thing, this demonic yoke of darkness, let it leave your body right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Come, my sister. What's your name? Grace. Grace. When I was speaking to a lady here and I said, Grace, I was, my eyes was being fixed. Are you married? We are going to visit marriage issues now. Just get ready. We are going to deal ruthlessly with that devil. Are you hearing me? Marriage is a good thing. Say it. Again. Say it one more time. Every good and perfect gift. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? That means every bad and imperfect gift comes from where? I tell you the truth. God is going to visit marriages right now. Look at me. Men don't come to you. Anybody that comes, they just mock you. They run away. They do all of these things. Some even insult you. Can I tell you something? You are wonderfully and fearfully made. I hope you know that God does mighty marriage miracles in this place. So when we are talking about marriage, look at another miracles are happening. Like I tell you, there is an open heaven. And this is what happens once there is praise. Please make sure the, the mic is set. Let's take this testimony. Yes, sir. Come, sister. Hallelujah. Apostle, when you gave a word for the woman, you said somebody's something was moving. In movement her. in her body. Yes, exactly. She's this person. is the person. She movement. She had an accident some days ago, and since then she's been having funny movement. Movement in, her in your body. Even standing here in the meeting, she was still having that. Any movement right now in your body. Lay your hands on your on your stomach. No, not on your stomach, not your legs. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen, sir. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're free, completely free. Give Jesus a big sister. I'm going to put, look at me. What are you doing? You are a teacher. Yes, sir. Eh? Government secondary school. I'm going to pray for you. Why don't they like you? What is all this thing I'm saying? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. Do you know me? Did we discuss this? Because I'm seeing real hatred. They hate this woman. Huh? I'm seeing Chuck. Chuck, you are a teacher. 
What are you teaching? The whole class. Okay, you promise me they teach everything. Oh, okay. Let me pray for you. Look at me. That devil is a liar and you should settle down. Do you believe me? Ah, wait. Come, come, come. This one is oppression. No, this one is not just. Let her go. That wicked, foul devil of darkness. Let her go now. Let her go. Come out of her right now. Let her go, thou devil of darkness. Release her right now with a mighty shout. Go, go. Now, please, if there is a woman here, you've suffered barrenness or a man, anything that you have not given birth, come out here quickly. Please, quickly, quickly. Bishop is still coming and Jakes, we have to hurry up. There's a big that will happen here. Please come out quickly. You, you must be married though, except if you are standing for somebody. Don't be emotional about it, please, please. Be looking at your neighbor. If you are from the same place, go back. Somebody has come to represent another person. We will have miracle children in this place. Look at, look how many people the devil is stopping them from enjoying. I mean, some of them are standing in for their loved ones. Look at, look at this, look at this. It looks like they are coming out to give offering. But this is, this is lack of, lack of children. You see the relevance of meetings like this? Listen to me. Who is standing for herself or for himself? For yourself. For yourself, come here, please. Quickly. Those who are standing for others, this way. For yourself. Look at me. Are you together? She's your wife? Oh, both of you are standing for yourself. Where's your husband? He traveled. I'm seeing a baby girl. Go and write it. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. See, let me tell you. Sister, look at me. You will come back here with your baby girl and testify. You believe that? Lord, confirm your word with power right now. Thank you, Jesus. You are set free. Ah! You're on his marriage. Why didn't you wait? This, the guy just said, okay. No, 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 no. Don't See, don't laugh. It doesn't mean you should do it anyway, but don't laugh. It's coming out. Look at me. You believe that there is supernatural grace for marriage, yeah? When, when are you, when is the wedding? Eh? Hold my hands. According to the time of life, I speak to you under the unction of the spirit. Before the end of this month, you will be in a very godly, serious relationship with a serious lady that is virtuous and love God. Father of spirits, connect them. You are the father of spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Wow, mighty miracles again are happening. You too, you for yourself, lay your hands on your stomach. Come, because I'm seeing something else. What did the doctor say? that means well we shall know this is not from god whatever it is pid eid we'll pray whatever it is and see look at me wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name at least the men don't understand some of them but the ladies you understand what she said abby do you understand or not we're going to pray look at me it will go and it will give birth to a lot of children what will stop you is discipline not lack of are you hearing what i'm saying i wish your husband were here oh, because he's not only you i'm supposed to pray for where is he just pray for him thank you jesus just lay your hands in 
Father, perfect her. The power of God is coming upon you and that devilish thing is leaving you right now. Return with testimonies. Return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let's hear Pastor Jakes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Apostle, when you give the word for somebody outside that God was feeling the person's teeth. Feeling the person's teeth. How many of you remember? Two this of her teeth. Two of her teeth. Had been removed. Can you open your mouth? Don't feel embarrassed. Two of her teeth has been removed. Look at. Sorry. I, this is bad. Viewers discretion. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad. We are disciplined people. But just so that we we'll celebrate God. Check. No hole. Look at this. No hole. I can't see any hole here. There was. Your teeth was removed. Two teeth. Two teeth was removed. Who knows her? Who knows her? Is it true that the teeth was removed? Who is that? It's, it's true. You are sure of that? Dorcas. Her name is Dorcas. Look at. And the teeth has been filled. Supernaturally. Give Jesus a big, Hallelujah. big hand. Big hand. Big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Now, all of you that are standing for any... See, if you are standing for anybody, when you go back, send the person a text and say, I just stood in for you. Now, believe and receive. Are you hearing me? send them a text don't let them roam around you are here suffering to stand in for them they are not connecting again hallelujah and because you are standing here it's impossible for you to face anything called barrenness i hope you know that the bible says and when job prayed for his friends god turned his own captivity job 42 verse 10 and 11. let me pray for you lift your hands look at as many people lift your hands some of you the power of god will come upon you on behalf of the people there my god children the bible says are a heritage from the lord and father you have made this place an apostolic ground in this city where there are tangible proofs evidences that jesus is alive right now i pray according to the measure of grace every yoke of bondage hear me every curse every fibroid low spam count every devil of darkness that is responsible for impotency or barrenness be lifted now in the name of jesus be lifted now in the name of jesus the power of god is coming upon some of you on behalf of your family members Reke to sopata, mandeke lekoto, rapata sikata. I release miracle children. I release miracle children. Take it, take it, take it, take it. On behalf of those you are standing for, they will come back rejoicing, testifying. Every spirit of darkness, responsible. For unfruitfulness if they don't have womb we create new wombs now in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus return back rejoicing send them a text that they have been prayed for and let me tell you see listen hold on hold on there are some who take in but lose the child is that true lift your hands on behalf of them because some is not that they don't take in they take in one month two months they just wake up in the morning and they just see blood that devil is a liar are you hearing me tonight is miracle service my god i pray the bible says the hand of zerubbabel that started this work that same hand will perfect it i pray no more miscarriage in the name of jesus everyone standing here return with dramatic testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please go back rejoicing god bless you Pastor Jakes, Bishop Stan, please come. Please come. They'll just be ministering to you in a few minutes. Hallelujah. I know that there are areas that they'll minister to you. While that is happening, pass the prayer request, please. This is a time for God to visit your case. Please, as you are passing it, be praying in tongues. As you are passing it, be praying in tongues. Say, Lord, this is it. My time has come. If they didn't call you, your prayer point will call your case now. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. 
Pastor Jake, so just minister by the grace of God. And then Bishop Stan. Sir. Please write your prayer request quickly. trusting the Lord for and Lord communicates to me for some of you especially God will touch you hmm. God's going to be touching some of you especially what you've desired from him specifically some of you God is going to be activating some anointing upon your life an unusual kind of anointing hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. I'm sensing it being poured on somebody's head. There are people, the Lord will be pouring it upon your head. Parido, fine dan gros tiki van tahi, lingo supra tika tare boste, randa kai. One of you, the anointing will be so heavy on your leg. Heavy, heavy. They will literally have to carry you out of this place. <laughs> they will literally have to carry you out of this place. Blessings, blessings, God is blessing some people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessings, God is blessing you. Please, those of you that are serving presently, like leaders in fellowship, just lift up your hands. Specifically, those ones. The Lord wants to reward you. God will touch you. He will reward you. God will reward you right now. Those of you serving, the Lord will reward you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you. The Lord will reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the reward come upon you. Let the reward come upon you in the name of Jesus. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord reaches out to you to bless you. The Lord will surprise you. Thank you, Jesus. Please, that person, it's a, it's your pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having unusual stomach pains. Your pancreas. I think pancreas should be in stomach, right? Pancreas, pancreas, pancreas. That's why I hear pancreas. Just lay your hands on your stomach. You've been having that problem. Right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release healing. Let healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus, let healing come to your body. Healing come to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, healing comes to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is going to be touching some people's eyes and you begin to have visionary experiences. The Lord is going to be touching. You feel like fire in your eyes as I pray with you right now. You feel like fire in your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. The Lord will touch your eyes. You begin to have visionary experiences. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let the wind of God touch your eyes. Let the wind of God touch your eyes. The wind of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the wind of God touches your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While Apostle was ministering, God told me about somebody amongst us, and I don't know, there might be more than one. Um, the devil gives you food to eat in the dream. And when you are done eating that food, you become heavy. 
I don't mean physically, spiritually. Let me clear this. It's possible for God to do an impactation for you. It's possible for God to do an impactation for you in the dream by giving you food, angel's bread. It's a spiritual one. But this one I'm talking about, the devil ministers it to you in the dream. And when you are done eating it, you wake up and feel less spiritual. You feel this heaviness upon your body and upon your spirit. If you are the one, I would like to pray with you. She's one of them. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Go! In the name of Jesus. Go! Thank you, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I declare freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. He will minister to you. Who dropped this picture? What happened to the baby? It's dead. The baby was born crippled. That devil is a liar. What did they say? No socket. This baby will stand and will walk. Let me tell you, if your prayer request gets here, it will be answered. Let me pray for marriages. Lift your hands before I pray for this. Just three things and we'll be done. Marriages. Hallelujah. The Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children will surround your table. Remember, we always share the scripture here. Please make sure you really lift your hands. Please lift inside and outside. I pray right now. Especially for those that have exceeded the normal time. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? The normal time that should happen. You are a man. You can't get a decent lady that is ready to settle down with you. And now as I'm praying this prayer, hear me. God is going to visit people. But some of you, if you know that you are not walking according to the ways of the Lord, stop it this night. Praise God. You can't be sleeping around, hopping around from man to man. One army officer to another one. One banker to another one. And then say, I don't have a husband. No, no. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. We are a holy people here and holiness is a big deal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as you are lifting up your hands, make sure that you are making a commitment. No sex before marriage. Don't let anybody deceive you. I'm saying it straight to the point. Hallelujah. No sex before marriage. No caressing. No all this nonsense that people do. No. Don't, don't open up yourself for demons. You tie your soul with demonic things. Be sure that you are going to keep many Christian relationships are not pure. Because a lot of people think everybody is doing it. No, not everybody is doing it. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his own? So, sister, just get it straight. Don't say yes to any brother who plans to just, if he does not have enough patience to honor you and wait, whatever is pursuing him, let him carry it out of your life. Hallelujah. I need to say this before I pray for you. God is not a magician. Are you listening to me? 
This is not a herbal center. This is a place where miracles happen by definite kingdom principles. Hallelujah. So make sure as you are standing here to receive, you are serious with God. And you've been involved in all these things I'm talking about. Stop it this night. Stop it this night. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, you put this as an apostolic platform to help and to build people and to terminate the works of darkness. And Father, this night, I pray for your people inside and outside and our online community. I declare every yoke of marital delay right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, be free from it now. Be free from it now. Anyone here who is of a marriageable age right now, we connect you to your life partner in the name of Jesus. And I pray that anyone here who is under any yoke, because there are some of you, it's not just you, all the ladies in your house, some you notice that you marry almost at age 40. No matter what you do, no matter how decent you are, you will never just get a faithful man. Some of you is married men that keep chasing you. As young as you are, you can't get a godly brother. You are coming to church. You are serving in church. The brothers are looking at you as if they are looking at this speaker. And then it's only a married man with children that are old enough to be your age. Who will be disturbing you? That yoke of bondage. This night, Kapoto Sheka, Repato Telebata, Aparato Koposobata. Let that yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Let that yoke be broken. I release you into your marital destiny. I release you. Sisters, I release you. Sisters, I release you. Brothers, I release you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can see a man of God, but there is a God behind that man. Soon as she yes, one day I feed you can soon I soon as she yes, one day I feed you can soon I soon as she yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon as she yes. The name that is above Joshua Selman. Mm. Soon as she yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon as she yes. One day I feed. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. This is what brings the power. One day I feed you can soon I soon as she yes. One day I feed you can soon I yeah. Aribiti Arabata and Latopiju. Aribiti Arabata Ain't la topi ju Oluwa Oluwa Ain't la topi ju Oluwa Aribiti Arabata Hey la tobiju Aribiti Arabata Hey la tobiju Oluwa Go ahead and just 
appreciate him very silent tell him lord i see what you are doing in my life thank you the one who has made me what i am today the one responsible for every sign and every wonder these are not the works of men <laughs> My own God. Mighty God. Miracle Walker, the God of wonders. The hand that moves us in a mighty way. Aribiti Arabatai Some of you have become too big to worship God. Ha. The journey is still far. Some of you have become so dignified. You have now come to a realization that you are beautiful. You have now discovered you are anointed. It doesn't hear your voice again. It doesn't see your tears again. Yes, Lord. I tell you, this is the secret of power, authentic spiritual power. Just express your worship to him in one minute. This is part of the meeting you are being made. Yes, Lord, thank you. May we never get too blessed to worship you. May we never get too anointed to worship you. May we never get too rich to worship you. May we never get too beautiful and handsome that we cannot cast our golden crown before you. For we are dust. There is nothing in us. Anything called greatness is on account of your faithfulness. Worship him honestly. There are certain people God can never trust with certain levels of the anointing. They are too big. God needs people that can, can cry, can lie down. They don't care. Some of you have suddenly realized you have anointing. Now you have ministry. You have church. Ah, where is the God that took us when we were nothing? Where is the God that brought us? If I used to cry and lie down years ago, what will suddenly happen that I cannot lie down again? What kind of honor? What kind of wealth? If you can be foolish enough, foolish enough to remember where he brought you, this is the secret of authentic power.
may we never get so blessed that we will feel ashamed may we never get too jaded may you not travel abroad so much that God becomes your boy may you never step into a level of honor that will make your heart ashamed not in his presence if I do not kneel down in his presence where else will I kneel down if I do not cry in his presence where else will I cry to men who cannot help me I was nothing when you found me I had no iota of grace when you blessed me no man knew my name no man desired me see what you have made out of my life today I will worship you let everyone know that you are the only one let everyone know you are the secret the mystery behind koinonia let everyone know you are the mystery let everyone know this inexplainable anointing this provoking said challenging demonstration of the spirit is a product of your mercy and your grace see Joshua Selman oh God that behind these mighty testimonies are miracles may men not see Joshua Selman may they see a God that is bigger than this child of you outside I hope you are participating in the worship
Lord, I remain a child in your presence. I don't care what men call me. I refuse to be carried away. How can I claim what I did not work for? How can I claim an honor that does not belong to me? Hallelujah. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. The most foolish person on earth is any man that tries to be a big man in God's presence. He's absolutely foolish. Absolutely. Absolutely. By every definition and every standard. Hallelujah. 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 See, you will never, never be this broken in God's presence and not contact authentic spiritual power. This is what has happened to a lot of people. They seek God as if they are talking to their mate. And when they see those who seek him in spirit and truth, they begin to criticize the depths and the dimensions that come from his presence. If you, I'm doing it in your presence so you will learn it. Break your pride in his presence. What do you have that he did not give you? Marriage, beauty, warn to me if I let anything that he has given me become an idol and I cannot worship him. I will cry like a baby in his presence. I'd rather cry before him than cry before men. I'd rather be disorganized and undignified in his presence and contact something tangible that the world cannot deny. John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and let the whole world come and watch you burn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have lost worship in our churches. I'm telling you. We have lost the art of his presence. Many people know how to pray. But many people do not know how to touch the heart of God. I have found my servant, David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Hallelujah. There are some of you now that believe we are wasting our time. There are some of you scattered in the congregation. Just wondering, why are we wasting our time? In two more minutes, just cry out to him. You have two minutes. Just tell him whatever you want to tell him. Forget the fact that you came here with anybody. I know you are a man of God. I'm not asking you about the crusades you have gone through and how many wheelchairs. I don't care about all those vanities this night. I know you see visions 
That's none of our business this night. Just two minutes. Let's stretch for two more minutes and we're done. become a great man of God listen to me when you become the great woman of God don't be so ashamed to worship God in the presence of those who honor you you let them know there is one who is mightier than you and that you are not ashamed to acknowledge this Let koinonia remain a place of your presence. Let it remain a habitation of the glory. We refuse to do what everybody is doing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute before you sit down, I'd like you to say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see more pray it inside and outside say lord open my eyes there is something you can show me that will make me a wonder to my generation there's something moses saw there's something elijah saw there's something elisha saw hear me there is something you can see higher that will make your world celebrate you i don't care what is not working in your life Show me what I need to see to become a global wonder. Show me what I need to see to carry that healing anointing for real. Not fake powers. Show me what I need to see to end inferiority in my life. Show me what I need to see to make my generation listen to me. Show me what I need to see that is bigger than my background, that is bigger than my failure. Show me what I need to see that can remedy for my past. Hallelujah. 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 Father, help us. This is our cry. This is our desire. Show us something. I prayed this prayer years ago and God answered it and he's still answering it. 
Some of you are sitting quietly in this congregation. When God is done with you, you will be surprised what he will make. And you will remember these days. When I didn't have one night, I cried like this. Even if I have one trillion, I will still cry before him. When I could not afford to buy a good shirt, I cried like this. Doesn't matter what I wear, I will roll it on the ground. When I didn't hold a mic, I cried like this. When there was no one in that room, I cried like this. Before a billion people, I would still cry. If God can get your heart, He will give you His hands. And when His hand comes upon your life, He will do wonders. Hallelujah. Those who can sit down, sit down. If you cannot sit down, sit on the floor, sit anywhere, don't worry. Sit down, let's see what we can do in the few minutes we have. Never feel stupid for what you are doing. Never feel foolish. Never feel foolish for what you just did. In Koinonia, we don't care who is who. When we come before God's presence, we are all equal. As far as His presence is concerned. Thank you, Lord. Revelations 2. Let's see what we can touch this night. three this was the spirit of God speaking Jesus speaking to the churches and this was the church a message to the church in Ephesus Let's start from verse 2. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how that cannot bear them who are evil. And thou hast tried them who say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Verse 5. This is a very important message. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. I want to show you why certain people have come out of the emphasis of the spirit listen please i have a very simple but powerful message my teaching very briefly this night seeks to teach you the spiritual principle that can make you relevant regardless of the seasons hallelujah there are certain people who begin to walk with the lord please listen to me when you look around nigeria today you will see certain people who were major apostolic voices before but right now they are quiet they have not backslidden but you know they are no longer in the current agenda of what the spirit of god is doing what makes a man to be a voice today a global voice and then later on he will lose relevance completely ministry motions are still on but the imprint of their grace is no longer speaking in the body of christ there are many people who have become victims 
of being etched out. The candlestick has been taken out of his place. The candlestick supplies light. And when that light comes, there is illumination. There is direction. Hallelujah. What makes someone to stand with God and that God will give him a voice and he will see mighty things in his life. And later on, the person just gets quiet. I need to teach you this. So that after 30 years, if Christ tarries, we will still be relevant. Have you heard people talk about certain people and say, in the days of XYZ, this brother or this man was a fiery man of God. And they list all the testimonies that used to happen in that church or in that music ministry or in that whatever it is. And they say today, the person is still there scrounging for relevance. Hallelujah. The secret of sustained glory. Hear me. There is nothing, there is nothing as, as horrifying as coming on the spotlight and then the Lord shifts the light from you by himself, not a demon spirit. It's better not to have risen in the first place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Than to be a voice to command unction across territories and then gradually you and everybody around you knows that God, you have come out of season with God. There are many people in the body of Christ today who are developing programs and different things to keep themselves relevant in the body. But everyone, including those who are not sensitive, they know that there is a shift. They are still part of the universal agenda of God. But the emphasis of God that's in that season, they did not make that match. They didn't qualify. Hallelujah. We are going to examine what does it take to remain relevant regardless of the kinds of seasons that God brings. What does it take to still be in God's program no matter what it is that he's doing that he will not be able to do it without you. That he can say although seasons are changing dimensions are changing prophetic faces are changing but you still remain constant. There are churches today that have dried out of the agenda of God. They are just carrying what we are calling motions. Forcing a lot of relevance from every angle. But the sincere truth is that they are not carrying any candlestick again. Are you hearing me? And we are going to examine why. What does it take to be featured in God's current move? What does it take to be part of what God is doing in the now? Not what he did yesterday. Seasons change. The emphasis of God changes. But what does it take a man? What, do, what does it take a man to keep walking with God? That regardless of the season, you, see, you remain relevant. When I started out, there were many pastors... There are not so many in Zaria and around again. There used to be many people. Men of God. Different caliber and type of people. Some were doing ministry as if it's 100 meters. Hallelujah. Today some of them are not even in the faith. Not to talk of the ministry. Hallelujah. Some of them have fallen out of relevance. Many of them have entered into all kinds of things. May God keep us. I said may God keep us. Very quickly. Let's examine what does it take. To be part of God's program for every season. And not to be edged out when a new move comes. Number one. Character. Everybody write character. Now look up please. In subsequent teachings before the year wraps up, I'm going to teach us on the mystery of the moon and the sun. Hallelujah. How that the moon is a type of the church and the sun is a type of God, the Christ. Hallelujah. The moon does not have any light of its own. Is that true? 
it is whatever it gets from the sun that it reflects to the inhabitants and that until believers come to that point where we have no life in ourselves outside of god and all that people see is a reflection of all that he is number one character In Genesis 1 26 he said let us make man in our own image and after our likeness the word image there means his nature his attributes his character let us make man to have our own type of character and then his likeness means let him function like us the same way we speak and things happen let him speak and things happen hallelujah the same way we can change impossible situations many people have assumed the likeness of god but not his image hallelujah there are many of us men of god we are pressed to the dimension of god's likeness his faith we can speak like god speaks we have his intelligence we have his audacity but we lack his image his character his nature and on that character, there are two things we'll look at. Number one, A, integrity. B, humility. Hallelujah. You want to be relevant in God's agenda, regardless of what seasons. I'm giving you the key. Integrity. We'll look at some scriptures very quickly. Proverbs 2, verse 21. God fired this thing in my spirit and I told him, I said, Lord, I want to remain relevant. Just write it. I'll run through them very quickly. These are scriptures on integrity. So, A, integrity on that character. Proverbs 2 verse 21. It says, For the upright shall dwell in the land and he that has integrity shall remain in it. Some versions say the perfect. Hallelujah. He said the upright will dwell in the land. But it is men of integrity that will remain. There are people who come and they go. But there are some people that remain. Hallelujah. Do you know what integrity is? Integrity is the ability to maintain your values. Regardless of the consequences. Regardless of the circumstances. The ability to maintain your values. There are many people that were something, they stood for something else years ago. But right now they have compromised on their values. Integrity. Hallelujah. That you represent something to the body and after 20 years you still represent it. Regardless of the consequences, whether you have members or not, whether you be famous or not, integrity. Many people like integrity. Hate, I mean, lack integrity. We dance to any tune that comes so long as it can sell. Hallelujah. Psalm 41, verse 11 to 13. Very quickly, still talking on integrity. I just want the Bible to speak for itself. Lord, grant us grace. We have to run. Psalm 41. I don't want to have to put a B part for this teaching. Psalm 41. From verse 11 to 13. Okay. By this, I know that thou favorest me. Because my enemy doth not triumph over me. Verse 12. It says, and as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity. And settest me before my face. 13. He said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. He says, my integrity, you upheld me because of my integrity. Can I tell you something? If you become a minister with integrity, if you become a man or woman of integrity, that you refuse and say, I am not changing. What is seen today is seen after 30 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What brings the favor of God today will bring the favor of God after 30 years. No bribe, no corruption, no tricks, no pranks, no matter what it will cost you. Everybody say integrity. 
we lack this grossly in the body of Christ. Job, in Job chapter 2. Let's look at verse 3. Job 2. Verse 3. It was a great man. The Bible says, this was God himself speaking to Satan. Listen. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? He says, a perfect and upright man. This is God speaking about a man. That feared God and eschewed evil. He said, and still he holdeth fast what? His integrity. Although thou movest me against him. This, sorry, Satan. I mean, this is God now. He said, thou movest me to destroy him without a cause. Although he has pain. Although this guy who was the greatest man in Israel. No crowd again. Nobody was talking about him. He used to be the talk of the town. The Bible says that he still held fast his integrity. Many people, you are a sister that promised yourself that no brother will sleep with you until you are married. But as your age is going by, are you getting me now? You say, okay, under certain circumstances, we can bend. Everybody say integrity. Many people lack integrity in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Many people lack integrity. A man of God who starts out well, preaching the truth, saying a lot of things. The day a millionaire comes into his church, he now goes to meet the person to corner him and start doing certain things. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus, I will hold integrity no matter what it will cost me. Let's run. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at verse 9. Verse 9 of same Job 2. Verse 9. Everybody read. What, do, what did his wife tell him? The wife got so tired of his integrity. Your integrity can frustrate a lot of people. And they will tell you, why not bend? Are you not a Nigerian? Hallelujah. Have you seen people that sleep around and men of God convince them and say, who is not doing it? Everybody is doing it. Let me tell you, not everybody is doing it. There are some people that have refused to bow to bear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you. Say, ah, everybody is doing it. Every man of God you see, touch something, just forget. It's not true. There are some people that have made a determination in their heart that they will hold fast their integrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, every miracle is stage managed. Forget Jare. I keep telling people, if you think the miracles, well, I know there are places they stage manage miracles, but if you think it's easy to act a miracle, try it. Produce a Nigerian film called The Miracle and act as many miracles as you can act and see how it will wear you away. The wife, a time can come, even your father can say, what is it about sleeping with that director? We are suffering in this house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Does sleeping with somebody kill somebody? Or will you bend? Hallelujah. Last week after the service, a couple came and met me. And they said um, that they were not able to bring their tithe. And that this is the tithe. This is for koinonia. Koinonia tithe is not my tithe. I told them, I said, go and give the treasurer. Hello? There are some of you that say, ah, this is after service. What is there? Me and the ministry, what is the difference? Do you hold fast your integrity? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at one more scripture. let's just stop there number two humility i have to run there are a lot of things i need to talk about and i want us to pray number two that's under character humility listen everybody say pride say it again pride let your ears hear what your mouth is saying say pride can i tell you something pride is worse than fornication 
many people do not know the danger of pride. If you see a man that was operating in a level of open heavens and suddenly you find out the ministry dead, no anointing again, no revelation, no insight. I tell you, at the root of everything, pride. It's what our Bible tells us. Let's read quickly a few scriptures. Proverbs 29, verse 23. Write it. Proverbs 29, verse 23. Pride is a killer. A killer of grace. A man's pride shall do what? Shall do what? A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall hope the humble in spirit. See a man who is humble. Humility is the ability to let men see God regardless of the degree of honor. To let men see God at all times. Hallelujah. There are people that come for counseling. Some of them old enough to be my parents. When they come, I give them a seat to sit down and they cannot even sit down. They just lie on the floor and they are rolling. And I'm wondering who are they rolling for? A time see let me tell you as you begin to rise there are some things that you don't pray for now but when authentic grace comes upon your life you will value them as great prayer points it's better not to rise at all are you getting what i'm saying than to rise and come down and be quiet are you seeing the reason why some people cannot be featured in what god is doing a time came the men became big men of god whether they pray or not, the power of God will still move. And you know, we men of God can fake it. Nobody will know. We can come on stage and do all the jamboree. Samson said, I will arise as before. Suddenly he found out that there was no hair again. Hallelujah. Pride goes before I fall. Matthew 23, verse 12. I wrote down a number of scriptures because I want you to have it. Matthew 23 verse 12 Scriptures on pride Hallelujah Let's read And whosoever shall exalt himself Shall be abased And he that shall humble himself Shall do what? What's the secret of exaltation? Beyond your seed I want to tell you That the state of humility If you make up your mind That people will see God in my life I don't care what comes hallelujah there are many of us who begin to rise in grace in different levels of life and you start creating a strata between you and others you see your friends and they greet you now i know that there is honor are you hearing me there is a place for honor but honor is not stupidity you pass and you see your friends drinking gary you say ah may god help you Next verse. Proverbs 22 verse 4. We want to consider this. Character is so important. I'm dwelling there. When I'm done, we'll just run through the others and pray. Everybody read. Just write it and read. They are projecting it to make it fast for us. We took some time to worship. Want to read. By humility and the fear of the Lord. I what? How many arrogant people like money and they will never see it? Because the Bible tells us the secret. How does it come? By humility. Alongside the fear of God. Are riches, honor, that you wouldn't die of hypertension and life. By humility. Even wealth. See, there are certain people you see. They keep rising. After 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You see a man that used to be a global phenomenon. All his cars are packed now. You see him trekking to the junction. Something has happened. Are you hearing me? Something has happened. Pride. Say, Lord, grant me grace to be humble. Let's look at two more scriptures. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. I'm giving you all these scriptures because I want you to remember it. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. 
Hallelujah. Let's read it. One to read. Humble yourselves, therefore, under what? The mighty hand of God, that he may. So let me bring good news. If you know you are humble right now, it's a matter of time. God is going to exalt you. Are you hearing me? And when God is exalting you, he doesn't need to consult with anybody. He will exalt you overnight. And when he exalts you, he will watch you. And he sees that you say, Lord, even at this level, I give you the glory. God will say, you are doing this for me. Take him higher. And you rise higher. You say, Lord, even at this level. Even at this level. There are certain men of God, their testimony has been from glory to glory. From glory. There are some men of God, you can attach faithfulness to them. You can attach diligence to them, but you cannot attach humility to their life. They are not humble at all. Hallelujah. There are others you know. I'm not talking of simplicity. Simplicity is not humility. There are many simple and arrogant people. Hallelujah. That you say, okay, God gave you money to buy a jeep. You say, me, I'm not worthy. I buy a bicycle. That's not humility. That's simplicity. You just feel like being like those in Singapore. You want to ride your bicycle all around. But that does not make you, you can be very, very arrogant. Pride and humility are of the heart. I've seen extremely blessed and humble people. I've seen extremely poor and arrogant people. In fact, there are more arrogant poor people than there are wealthy people. Hallelujah. James 4 verse 6, last scripture on humility. James 4 verse 6. If you forget any scripture about humility, don't forget this. James 4 verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Who resists them? If God resists you, who will deliver you? Hallelujah. There are some people, they, they are not under demonic you. God himself is against them. He says, God resisted the proud. But what does he do to the humble? That means if you see that there is no grace multiplied in your life, go and check your humility. That's why you see certain people function. After a while, you will know. See, when a man grows in grace, you will know it. He doesn't need to say it. You see it. You know that this is another dimension of grace. Hallelujah. See, after me, I receive grace to be a man of character. There are some of you I'm preaching to because you are at the verge of compromising. You love God. You want to be relevant. Some of you are men of God. God have told you to sit down. You want to get up now. You are saying, Kai, the way this thing is going, is doing me. Huh? They've already told me that they'll even give me two rooms to start church and counseling center. Sit down. God has warned you. You know the thing with God? He will speak once and he won't tell you anything again. You just go. And then you will face a rude consequence character number two what it takes to be relevant progressive depth in the understanding and the teaching of the kingdom progressive depth you want to remain current in what God is doing there must be passion there must be depth you must keep digging deeper. Seeking to understand the truths of Jesus, the truths of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. This is one of the major reasons why many men of God are already out of sync with spiritual things. They got to certain dimensions and that was good. But they camped around there and thought that was all there is. And then as people started rising, see there are some things that years ago, if they happen in the church, people will run away because people had not grown to that level. And certain men of God seem to be custodians of those dimensions. Now, anybody in any fellowship can work. When people enter some dimensions, they start seeking more. And if you are not pressing, they will edge you out and continue moving. This is what has happened to a lot of people. Passion to keep knowing God more. 
Have you seen men of God that you listen to them? After seven years, there is no growth, nothing new, nothing fresh. You are not discovering anything. You are not excited about anything. You are not finding out a new dimension. You will not be sustained in the agenda of God. Progressive death. Three scriptures. Second Peter 3 verse 18. You must grow in progressive depth in the understanding and in the teaching of the kingdom because there is so much don't let any man deceive you that there is nothing more to explore are you joking there's a man called richard sigmund please listen to me he went to heaven one of the few people who's going to heaven we can trust hallelujah we have not finished the series. We are coming back. Praise God. He went to heaven and he went into a room called the library. The library that God himself wrote books about himself for people to keep exploring about him even in heaven with the renewed mind. And he saw someone sitting there and reading one of the books. Listen please. It was a library of many books. And when he entered, he saw the man and he came to the man he said how long have you been sitting here and the man told him that in earth's time is two millennia he has been sitting for two millennia and he checked the book he was on page two page what what you call rema let me tell you this is why demons don't move when they hear they say what is rema we knew this thing since the time of moses you are knowing it today you are now jumping and calling it rema grow in grace and what in the knowledge of the lord grow 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 everybody say i'm growing where you were yesterday and the dimension that oh speak to this mountain it will move okay demons can do this okay this let me tell you a time will come if you don't move they will move you out of the way it's what has happened to a lot of people i'm tired of the status quo there's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. A genuine, hear me, a very serious man of God should be the type that can lead his congregation to a depth of pursuit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you send me text messages and you say, sir, I just saw this scripture, this and that and that. And I look at the scripture and I'm like, wow, I've never seen this light. And I pick up my Bible no matter how late. Let me tell you, my Bible, if I'm on the bed, my Bible follows me and my books. You ask the people that know me. If I wake up, I'm carrying it. I'm on the chair, it's there. If I'm lying down on the bed, as I'm lying here, it's, it's here. If I just wake up, I want to touch it and feel it because I can open it at any time. When God fires something into my head, I open it and check. What are you saying? Some of you don't have a passion for the word of God. You think revelation will just come because God likes you. The Bible says, buy the truth. It will cost you. Grow in grace. Are you growing in grace? Hear me. If you have a church here or you're a pastor or those listening online, if you are not growing in grace, a time will come your members will exhaust every revelation you have to give them and they will go and look for something more. At that time, you will start getting angry correct this is what is happening with a lot of frustrated pastors they have refused to press deeper hallelujah now your member is coming to tell you i went for one program and they explained something to me say who, who asked you to go did i permit you so you are saying what i'm giving you here all this all this look let me tell you the remedy is to carry fire and carry unction John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and watch the world come to see you born. And let me tell you, as I'm talking, make sure you are not thinking of another man of God. You are the one I'm talking to. You know we don't do tell them in Koinonia. Tell who? I'm talking to you. Philippians 3 verse 8. Verse 10, sorry. Philippians 3 verse 10. Are you growing in revelation? When was the last time you had something new in your spirit that provoked you to study one scripture for two weeks? 
when did you have something that made you to go and buy three or four books you said oh god jordan order this book order that book order this there are some of you your facebook youtube and all of these things they are avenues for you to dig deep there's nothing provoking you in my personal study now i'm studying the blood preparing for miracle service i tell you next week will be something else all through this month i've been studying on the blood if it is true that the blood is god's last card you know why because there are certain people who have come i've prayed for them and their situations have not changed and it has been disturbing me a lazy man of god will go and sleep and say did i die for you but you get angry and say lord this should not be you are praying if you pray for 10 hiv people and three get healed that's not a good record they are testifying and they are calling you MOG. But what about the seven? Hallelujah. If you pray for 10 people with cancer and one gets healed, or 100 people with genotype and 20 get healed, that's good. Clap, appreciate God. But there is more. Every time I go back, I tell God, Lord, there is more. There are people who have had issues I could not solve. Open my eyes. When you do that, the heavens will be open. God will say, I have seen your heart. You are not just getting Rema so that you will be MOG, so that you will bombard and confuse people and compare spiritual things with spiritual things. You have a desire to bring a revelation that will bring liberty to the body of Christ. Look at me. There are many people whose revelations have not profited the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Two days after you sit down, you cannot even remember what you had. The end of revelation is that you'll be liberated. I don't care what revelation you bring at the end of it if they are still demon possessed people they are still sick people they are still oppressed people they get back and they go into their frustration you just did a religious jamboree you must contend for revelation alongside the anointing to demonstrate it many people have rema that they copied and paste from one man of god that's why there is no grace backing the revelation they share it the way the man of God shared it, but they don't see what the man of God saw. The church is full of copy and paste Christianity because people are so frustrated. They are looking for anything that works. Anything. Right now, you just tune your TV. If they don't show people falling under the anointing in the advert, it looks like that ministry is not serious. So everybody... They go and start searching for videos that somebody fed. it doesn't matter what through the person they just package it and push it together because everybody is trying to copy and paste but there are men who carry a unique identity when they come out you know this is not copying this one came from the secret place last scripture still the same uh, philippians verse 13 to 14 Still Philippians 3. Brethren, I count not. This is Paul. Everybody say Paul. You know who Paul was? Let me tell you something. Paul got his revelation directly from the Spirit. Are you getting me? It was him that wrote what we call the Pauline epistles. He opened the body of Christ to dimensions of grace. Paul that was caught up in the Spirit many times. He died many times and came back to life. And this is what he has to say. At the apex of his apostolic ministry. Brethren, I count myself to have what? Not to have apprehended. That means truly oh, me to have not caught this thing. Ha! This is Paul speaking. He said, but one thing I do, hallelujah. He said, forgetting all the rema, forgetting the dimensions. Yes, I know I brought a new dimension. But he said, forgetting it and reaching forth unto those things that are what? Before. Verse 14. I press. Everybody say press. Everybody say press. That's the secret. There must be a dissatisfaction in your spirit. I go for meetings and sometimes when I'm teaching people put their hands on their head and they are just looking at me that's exactly what kills men of god hallelujah i went for a meeting and we just had worship just worship the first session 
And when we came out, some of the people were just sitting on the floor. They said, what have we been doing? And you as a man of God, when you see that, you just nod your head. Say, even them, they will know that God tried for me. A day will come. The hunger of those people will rise. They will catch up with that dimension and they will move. And you will think they don't respect you. They respect you. You just stop moving. And they had to move ahead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A lot of people say, this guy didn't used to greet me before. This was my boy. Oh. It's not the issue of boy. In the realm of the spirit, overtaking is allowed. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Never get to a point where you are satisfied. Listen, do you know there are times that I carry my former books? Books that God taught me several things. In the place of retreat and i look at them i have been teaching about them for years but i sit down and i ask myself joshua selman do you really understand these things you have been teaching sometimes you need to tell yourself the truth and sit down you have been teaching on faith sit down and you'll be shocked that you do not even understand it many of us have been teaching on tithing and you don't tithe it means you have not yet caught in the revelation pause for a while and study your own messages there is no koinonia message I've not listened to, including last week. And I don't collect it directly from the media. I download it myself. I want it to cost me. This message, this night now, because I'm flogging myself. When I finish, I'll now go and play it and sit on the floor and say, Lord, speak, lash me, do everything. It's only me and you here. This is the secret of growth. There are men of God that have brought themselves to a point where it does not look like they can learn anything new again. Are you getting me? Even when they are reading the books of somebody else, it looks like, let me just see what this person wrote. Paradventure. If there is anything, I can pick one or two things. Ha. Pride. And it goes before a fall. Because Dr. Paul Enenche says, it is God that will use the calabash to fetch water so that he will disgrace the pot. Hallelujah. Calabash to fetch. When, when pot is saying, I'm the only one. God will say, Calabash, come. You are wood and you have holes. He will fetch water with it and it will not pour. Say, if you will not praise me, I will raise stones and create mouth and head in them and give them a brain. And they will raise praise and worship. While you stand there and you are watching me. May God not replace any one of us in this current move of the spirit. I tell you, this is one of my greatest prayer points. I pray every time and I say, God, let Koinonia not get to a point where whatever it is would distract us. That's why you see, the way God helped us to design this ministry, the leaders do very little of administration. Are you getting me? I am almost not involved in the administration. What I do is generally just over. If you see me come out, I'm just coming to encourage the people. We have raised a robust leadership structure. Imagine that in the afternoon I have to come and check and say this decoration, did they do it well? And then I come and between my mouth in the evening. And while I'm talking, demons are shouting amen. And then you say, come out. And the demons say, you, go out. They will drive you out of ministry. Some of you think we're in America. Let me tell you, you're in Nigeria. Africa. Hallelujah. That's why there are some days I don't let people just come to disturb me. I don't care what it is. You build yourself. Many ministers, one of the things that kill them is that they start doing administration and forget ministry. Hallelujah. Immediately after the program, treasurer come. How much is coming in now? I saw one man. What did he give? Open that white envelope. You see, when you leave the ministry of the word and prayer, and you start doing all kinds of administrative things, prognosing into departments that you set up, you set up the department, you are not allowing them to work. Imagine if I come here, I say, Mike, stand up. I can play keyboard, though. I hope you know that. And I sit there, I play. And then I say, Tosi, you are not getting this thing. At the end of it, you won't do what you are supposed to do. And you come out and you see, let me tell you, where there is no fire, members are dangerous people. They know when this thing is not entry. They just keep looking at you because they respect you. At the end of it, the same man of God, this, this message. Ah! 
and then on their way back home, they say, bros, nah, this is no way. Hallelujah. Number three. So number one, character. Number two, progressive depth in the understanding of the kingdom. Number three, this is very important. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Write it as long as I'm reciting it. Write it like that. Don't change it. I know why I put it. It may be too long, but it makes sense. I found a way of putting it. I found out that using synonyms will confuse you. Write it the way I'm dictating it. Are you ready? Write now. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Through consistent, notable miracles, signs and wonders. Star consistent. Star notable. Or underline them. Grace to demonstrate in your meetings the reality of Christ and of his kingdom through consistent, notable miracles, signs and wonders. You are not walking there, you will not last. Period and full stop. Hmm. Hallelujah. A lot of people say, me, God just called me to teach. He didn't call me into any healing or anything. If you are sick, come and sit down and hear the word. If the word doesn't heal you, go back home. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says Jesus was in a place teaching. He said, and as he taught, the power, the gospel itself is the power of God. So if there is no power backing it, what you are teaching is something else. Hallelujah. Number three, are, are you writing it? Okay. Look at me. Say miracles. Shout it, miracles. Say signs. Say wonders. Can I tell you, if you step into the miraculous, the worst that can happen is they will criticize you, but they will follow you forever. Forever. How many? Not, not 10 years. They will follow you when? Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ. I told God, I don't want a kind of ministry I cannot prove what I'm teaching. You can say, oh, there are sinners in this place. Blah, blah, blah. At the end of you, you say, now, those of you who are sinners, just go back home and uh, think through what I've shared. Are you joking? There's no power to make altar call. That's why we round up our meetings with prayers. If we teach you on impartation, be sure that at the end of it, there will be a mighty demonstration of the Spirit. If we call this meeting koinonia, and you come in, and you are surprised to see people falling under the anointing, that's why we call it koinonia intimacy oh i believe in miracles absolutely i have no there is no i'm not one of those ministers that say miracle is not really important look miracle is very important john 6 63 let's look at these things quickly i pray that something will come upon you this night in the name of jesus christ Listen, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit that does what? That means if what I am speaking is truly of God, there should be a quickening. Is that true? The word quicken there means to give life. Is that true? To give life to your dead body, to restore you. It is the spirit that quickeneth. He said the flesh, empty talk, does not profit anything. He said the words that I speak, they are what? They are not just sermons. They are spirit and they are life. That means as I'm speaking to you, something should be happening to your spirit man. Hallelujah. Two scriptures. First Corinthians 4 verse 20. Charles and Francis Hunter. Mighty generals who did great things for God. They said one miracle is worth a thousand words. One one authentic miracle everybody read one to read for the kingdom of god is not in but in the kingdom of god is characterized by a demonstration of power i'm not just talking of falling down 
and then you stand up and you cannot identify what happened to you that you fall down and stand up and know that something happened hallelujah there was a time ben hin was just laying hands on people they were falling or a robbers looked at him and said benny don't just throw them down give them something that means you can throw people down a great man of god in john g lake's time john g lake sat down and was watching him he was ministering he was laying hands on people over a hundred people they were just falling down when they finished people were clapping john g lake laughed and said follow me to my office when he got into my the person's office john g lake said only 30 people were healed all those other people you were playing on stage these are the people you say men to they were men generals indeed hebrews 2 verse 4 oh may your ministry be characterized by authentic signs and wonders current listen i said no table consistent not one miracle per year it's not enough to challenge people god also bearing them witness that means a miracle is a confirmation god is stamping what you have you have said god also bearing them witness both with what signs and wonders and with what diverse heterogeneous miracles in different areas i'm not the man of god that believe that only the sick have a package to receive uh -uh anybody bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed whether it was sickness whether it was whatever and the gifts of the holy ghost according to his will could it be that this is why your church is not growing that you are a great man of god with revelation but there is no grace to demonstrate the reality of what you are saying I don't mean this childishness that people do after meeting even when there is no reason they just call three ladies you have shared the grace you must force two of them to fall down that's not what i'm talking about there are men of god who are under pressure to show their anoint the moment they stand up they say there's a lady here stand up they waste people's time 30 minutes they are dead and they come one finger two fingers three they now push now they turn you when I was teaching my friends on the anointing, I told them, never turn a person's head. This is nonsense. Brother, if you have power, it will show. Come on now. Hallelujah. I'm not against if you caught a revelation of doing it. I don't know. It may mean losing the person from captivity. I can't judge you. Are you getting me? But one thing I want you to know is that when there is authentic power, it will speak. Do you know what it means to speak and your words will throw a man down? A man who is matured and standing, minding his business. You are talking and the word throws him down. That's power, my brother. That's authentic power. If it's not power, do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember one of our brothers, Sadiq Ibrahim. How many of you remember him? There are a few people. That, that occult guy. That guy slept in the grave for three days. How many days? Three days. He got all kinds of power. Escaped from many prisons in this Nigeria. Belonged to a cult called Highlander. He was dying of HIV and tuberculosis with all his jars. He sat outside like this. I came up on the stage. And the Holy Ghost roared through me like a lion. The brother said all he knew was he saw fire. That was the end of it. They carried him and brought him here. You people saw him, right? Healed of HIV, healed of tuberculosis. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. The guy said when he was outside and he saw people falling, he said, yes, there's power in this place. Whether it's of God or it's Babala, there is sharp power in this place. Look, let me tell you, I say this not to brag. There are many of you, if it's not because of the demonstration of the power of the Spirit, you will not come here. Many of you saw something that troubled you. We were sitting outside. When somebody ran outside by himself, you just said, ah. Next Sunday, you gathered all your stubborn brothers from home and said, let's go. 
I'm tired of this trouble you are creating at home. Just come and sit down here. Some of you came here. It was criticism that brought you. You just came to criticize. And when you sat down, before the praise and worship will finish, God started doing what he was going to do on you. And see what has happened to your life now. The power of the Holy Spirit. This is why we believe. But the balance here is when the power takes the place of the accurate teaching of the word. That's when it becomes an error. Every meeting cannot just be power. Keep throwing people up and down, up and down. It is the word that builds. And when I say word, I don't just mean this word, word. Men of God are saying the accurate teaching of scripture. Because what some people are calling word is not word. It's just stories. Let's hurry up. There are others, but these are the most important aspects. Listen, when you see any man or any ministry or any individual that is beginning to be etched out of the program of God, these are some of the things that have gone wrong. Character is dwindling. The person is no longer contending for death. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it happens when people start celebrating you. They say, ah, you. Do you know this revelation you brought? I've never had it anywhere. Members can deceive you. Members know how to talk to you. They'll just say, man of God. Oh, the text, some of you write to me. If I follow your text, I would have died since. Since. Some of you just write the text. Oh, my father. Where would I have been if this and that and that and that? your grace the oil on your life and before that happens i wrap my head i say you are not expanding anywhere remain there look at me could this be what has destroyed some of you now before you started leading prayers in your small fellowship you were honestly humble and you used to seek god but they made you to start leading prayers in your small fellowship right now even where they told you to be sitting before just say me now see there are levels in the spirit i've paid my price and allow me to enjoy my team there are some of you who cannot go back and clean chairs in your churches again hello you can't clean chairs in your churches again say me i had of one brother that i think he was a pastor somewhere and the faculty is faculty fellowship on campus there chose him to be something i think chief usher also when they called him the guy said him god didn't tell me i'm going to serve as chief of usher i said ah my brother that chief usher is the best gift that god has given you because it will remind you at every time hallelujah praise the lord i look forward to the time that i'll go for a meeting where there is a great man of God and there will be nobody to play keyboard. And I'll just remember I used to be the music director. I'll just play and say, MOG, ride on, sir. And while I'm playing, I'm saying, Lord, whatever is on this man, I won't leave this place the same way. Pride. There are others, but I think I'll save them. Or let me just, there are three of them, I'll just list quickly. Prosperity, the spirit of excellence and good leadership. These are the other three. But you really don't need to emphasize this is what I want to get. Because the other three, once I start talking of money now, some of you will be happy. I, I want this sacred, this spirit of holiness that is in the atmosphere to remain. I don't want any talk of money to come and scatter it. That's why I don't want to talk about these other things. There is an atmosphere right now that has been created if i start talking of money prosperity spirit of excellence and leadership it will neutralize this lashing that god is doing for some of you now so let's just leave it there so that it will enter and cause change there is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary there is a stillness in the atmosphere. No 
the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary God is here please remain seated we'll stand up in a minute and I want us to pray don't bow your head yet there are some of you you are at the verge of losing out on the agenda of God some of you are losing out on character you are losing out on character the way you have started behaving with ladies is calling for caution you are just laughing about it God is already pointing and say oh boy you are going too far you are going what too far listen you need to be examining yourself and may God bless you with friends that can have the courage to say my brother that hug was not a normal hug you have been hugging for 10 years the one you did this night no way let's go let's go and pray let's go and pray fast if you do not have people around your life that can tell you this truth you will die soon hallelujah there must be people around your life that will not call you man of God say my brother what was happening this program was happening is until they wave hand before you and who are you looking at say truly or me too honestly I love God but this relationship thing we need to let's pray you see God has helped you if you do not have people around your life that can help you like that you can stand and be entering the pit and be claiming you are standing till the day it covers you people cannot find you again where are you in the pit hallelujah the bible says to examine yourself don't surround your life with psychophants who are always telling you what is good alone let me tell you you may hate them and those of you who talk to people talk to them in love don't carry your big mouth and start lashing people say how can you you're a man of god you are now telling me you watch pornography yes they have the brother that he came and spoke to you whereas you too that's what you did let him that stand take heed lest he falls. Character. Some of us do not have character at all. You run your mouth anyhow. The moment you step out of here, you carry koinonia and leave it in CGC. And you come out. There's a way I talk. Anybody that I will wash you down. Character. You want to be relevant. Who do you want to marry? I want to marry a man of God. I want to be a woman of God. With this your mouth, God will not take you there. No way. Hallelujah. There are some of you that just have this disdainful way of looking at people. When they are not rich, they are not your class. And there is a way you look at them. This guy that cannot even speak English, you keep tapping your neighbor and laughing at the person. One day you will look for a job and open the door of the office and see that it's the person you are laughing at who is going to give you the job. And the person will look at you and say, it's my turn to shine now. Number two, there must be a positive in your heart. See, the day you stop seeing the need to seek more of God, please stop coming for Koinonia. There is no need. Koinonia is the place where when people are weary, are you getting me? When they know there is more, this is why we always keep the fire burning. Because there are some of you, you travel and you go and meet some of these, your godless friends around. And they just water it down. There are many people crying and begging that Asu will just call up the strike. Not necessarily because they want to come back. It's like fun. They want to just blow some fresh air. I need you. I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you, I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you. For nothing, no place, no one else will do. My soul longs and 
believe in things for you. My heart and my flesh rise out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning. It was a revelation to the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, longing for you. You must contend for revelation. Be ever learning. No matter what level you get, humble yourself to learn. Not just those from those who are greater than you. You can learn from children. You can learn from animals. If you maintain a teachable heart. Number three, contend for authentic power. I tell you, we have a very, very, very powerless church. There are just few powerful men of God. It's my desire to see that the least among us here is walking in dramatic levels of grace. Even if you are not called into the fivefold ministry, that when we begin to give testimonies here, we we'll hear that you raised the dead at home. We we'll hear that you did mighty things, that you spoke over lives and territories. This is our joy. Not what God did through the ministers, but what God is doing through you. This is our satisfaction. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. For seven minutes, hold the hands of everybody around you. We are going to pray in tongues. Seven minutes of fire and praying in tongues. Go ahead. Participate. number one in the next two minutes flog it out with God whatever you know in your life hear me that is not showing good character I don't care what it is especially lack of integrity and pride you are going to pray right now see let me tell you humble yourself in this place tonight if it's masturbation if it's pornography if it's immorality are you getting me if it's theft if he's smoking, if he's drinking, if he's backbiting, slander, 
whatever can make you irrelevant i'm not doubting your salvation open your mouth and say lord prune it out of me now lift your voice and pray examination personal re-examination I say Lord am I beginning to have an unusual desire for women or money or pride or ministry see when you see a man who is in the presence of God you will never see a challenge in his life for a long time after a short time you don't see it again that's a sign that he went to the presence of God men don't just fall overnight is a progression of carelessness progression of carelessness hallelujah number two we are going to pray you're going to say lord open my eyes let revelation i i i i refuse to brag at the level i am now spiritually i humble myself there is more take me there lift your voice and pray of these revelations otherwise men will think i'm lying say father from the throne let fresh power lift your voice and pray fresh power 
the power of the Holy Ghost for signs, for wonders, miracles, diverse demonstrations. Power, power in the name of Jesus. We receive power. Power to dethrone principalities. Power to heal the sick. Power to set the captives free. Power to liberate destinies that have been bound. Power to save sinners. Power to command results. To command victory. Take it, take it, take Holy Ghost, we ask you, let there be a ray of fresh power, fresh fire, fresh power, fresh fire. Power for signs, power for wonders, power for miracles to shut the gates of darkness, power over territories, power over HIV. Power over cancer, power over poverty, power over marital delay, power over yokes of darkness, power over ancestral curses. Lord, I receive, Lord, I receive fresh option, fresh grace. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. This is the missing link that has made some of your loved ones to deny the grace of God upon your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whenever they cry, you join them and cry too. Whenever they seek for help, you are helpless before them. But tonight, in one more minute, you are going to say, Lord, it won't happen like this again. I am tired of joining unbelievers let my coming for koinonia show out there let my coming for koinonia let it show that i'm contacting power Don't let anybody fool you. The earth responds to power, my brother. He said, Behold, I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy. Listen. Hear me. We cannot come into your homes. We cannot meet your loved ones. That's why we are training you. We are setting you on fire. That you will go and be the ambassador. Of what good is it? If we keep training you. And then we are the ones who keep traveling to your, to help the people. That from today, you say I'm an ambassador. I'm not ordinary again. Whether you're a man or woman. See, listen. Hear me. Hear me. The Holy Ghost is ministering to me. We are going to pray against the spirit of fear. Many of you have this anointing. But the boldness, not to do foolish things, but to take steps. The boldness to make declarations and tell your family members 
I know you know me as your child, but I'm speaking as an ambassador of heaven. That fear and shame, cast it right now. Lift your voice and pray one minute. Fear that stops me. Go, 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 Kata. You are anointed. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Fear of your past. You must not be a man of God or a woman of God as it is. You are an ambassador. You are an envoy. I command fear out of God's people. I command humility. Hold as lion. Hold as lion. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 When it comes to dealing with people, they should see you as gentle as a dove. Are you hearing me? You are cautious. You are loving. You are forgiving. Somebody does something against you and thinks you are going to destroy him and say, bless you. Don't worry. But when it comes to dealing with devils, you can't be a dove. Come on now. Hallelujah. See, there are many of you, the devil is sitting on your destiny happily because you are not angry enough. Are you hearing me? Some of you don't fast. Some of you don't pray. Can I tell you something? It's my personal recommendation that an average believer should fast at least once in a week. We have not been taught a lot of people say the era of fasting is where get out those demonic teachings out of your way. That's why the people are not powerful. The devils keep moving around. Let me tell you. Not, not out of religion. You can start from once in two weeks. As a worker here, as a leader, you, I don't know how people live. At least once in a week. Dedicate some time. Not this fast that you are dragging already from 8 o'clock, waiting for 4 or 5. Once it's 4, you just say, where is the food? You gather your breakfast, lunch, and dinner you want to revenge. No. See, it's time for you to begin to undo many teachings that are frustrating your Christian life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fasting is part of the kingdom keys that set any man on fire no demons know those they can oppress there are others that oppress demons the bible says i have sent carpenters to terrorize these homes hallelujah praise the lord make it a point of duty at least once in a week dedicate some time Wait upon the Lord. Even if you cannot wait all day, you can start from 6 to 12. Hallelujah. Spend the time praying. Sleep under a message. Get gathered some of these hot koinonia messages. Put them together and fire your spirit and see the demon that will remain there. Hallelujah. It's our goal to make you on fire. I'm telling you. It will save you a lot. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. And there are two things I'm praying for you this night. And then we'll round up. Number one. Is a hunger like never before. For the things of the spirit. Some of you, your hunger has dried. That's the honest Jesus truth. Prayer life, zero. Word life, zero. You just have many messages. You are not listening to them. Hallelujah. You mix all kinds of ungodly, useless musics that will not take you anywhere. I've told you these things, brothers and sisters. I preach to you in love. Get those things out of your phones. 
Don't say it does not matter. You are on assignment. You are an envoy. You are going somewhere to happen. Hallelujah. Number two is I'm going to pray for you that beginning from this week, may you begin to see results. Are you hearing me? Not just results in your life, but that God will begin to use you for God's sake, so that some people that have been doubting your God will hear a testament that will let them believe. Lift your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you. When I pray, I just want you to shout amen as you receive. I pray that a hunger like never before will come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that those whose prayer lives have died from this night, grace will come upon you. You will stretch for hours without knowing. Some of you used to wake up every night at least for 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Once it's 12 or 1, you know it's your time. You stretch for some minutes. Right now, you sleep like, you sleep like a baby till morning. Generals don't do like that. From tonight, let your prayer altar be restored. In the name of Jesus. There are some of you, aside from today, the last time you read your Bible was last week. It's not like you don't want to read it. But when you try, there is a disinterest, I pray. That power of darkness that makes the word of God of irrelevance. I cast it out of your life right now. I cast it out of your life right now. I cast it out of your life right now. I pray that from tonight, may your Bible become your best friend. A man of God says your bag is not fashionable if it does not have a Bible inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for you. Koinonia, let me tell you the truth. Our joy, my joy, is not to see one man of God doing mighty things and then there are many helpless people who come to stand to receive. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, whatever grace you have put upon this house, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that for as many who believe tonight, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the anointing is going to fall on some of you in a mighty way. At the count of three, you will take this grace now. One, two, three. Take it. Take it now. 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 I release upon you the grace of the house. Take it, take it, take it. Take it outside, everywhere. Take it. Whether you are falling or not, it's not the issue. Receive it. Let the fire upon the house fall on you. Let the fire upon the house consume you whatever we can do may you do it whatever sickness is healed here may it be healed through your hands hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me please everybody listen we're out of time I want you to keep standing. I want to make an altar call right now. There are many of us who came here searching for answers. Health answers. Academic answers. You are tired of your life. And you know that there is something more. I want to introduce you to this man. Jesus. The true solution to every man's predicament. That guarantees you a victorious life in this world. And even in the life to come there are many of you who are tired you have asked questions that people cannot answer hallelujah and you came here this night for many of you you were weary you dragged yourself here i want you to know that it's time to make a genuine decision for jesus some of you have given your heart to the lord once 
honestly you have but because of the cares of life you derailed from the ways of god tonight god is giving you a new beginning these two categories of people right now i want you to leave your seat outside inside leave your seat quickly and run out here nothing to be ashamed of is a new beginning don't wait for anybody you are the first person god bless you they are coming god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you come and line up here god bless you god bless you thank you for coming it's a new day it's a new day koinonias encourage them encourage them no matter where you are outside keep coming you came to honor your friend's invitation but god is calling you tonight god bless you keep coming keep coming there are many of them outside celebrate them celebrate them keep coming keep coming it doesn't matter how far you have gone no matter how old you are no matter how young you are keep coming the lord is bringing you bless you my sister bless you my brother don't let anybody stop you there is a power that will set you free it's a new beginning god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you hallelujah i salute all of you here for making this bold decision are you listening to me you didn't come just to look at a man it's a new beginning for you hallelujah i'm going to lead you to the lord right now listen let no man condemn you god can give you a new beginning i don't care what you have done there is love in this place the bible says for as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away the lord is showing me two people outside the lord is showing me two people outside the holy ghost is ministering to you and saying you should join us there are two people outside please leave your seat and come for the sake of your salvation god is speaking to me there are two people outside two people outside two people outside don't remain there don't remain there don't remain there hallelujah now all of you in front lift your hands very high and i want you to say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart listen jesus is in this place i want you to say it with revelation say after me lord jesus tonight i make up my mind to walk with you to live for you and to serve you all the days of my life i repent of sin i repent of my shortcoming let your blood speak for me this night i have heard your word i repent of my sins i invite jesus into my heart be my lord and savior write my name in the book of life from today the power of sin over my life is broken every habit everything that is not of god i'm I've, i'm doing away with you right now and i will never return to you from today i am a new person this is a new beginning for me in the name of jesus christ now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones to yourself and i pray that you will honor them i pray that you will lift them whatever burdens and cares that they brought before you lord let it be rolled away supernaturally this night i pray that from today let grace come upon them that this will not be an emotional decision let this be a decision that will last make mighty men and women of god out of this one hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you